Hey everybody, how you doing this morning? Okay, here's the thing. I've been an agent for 46 years, January 22nd, uh, 1973 I started. I started when I was seven. And um, one of the things that I wanna, why well, I was so excited to be here with all of you today is because I think this is the greatest time ever to be an insurance agent. For the first time ever, I believe if you sell cash value life insurance, you're the competition. And you have to understand why it's so important that we get this message through to all of you. You're the most important people on the planet right now, and we haven't done a good enough job of making sure you understand that because all the institutions that we depend on are not going to be able to keep the promises that they've made. Government is not going to be able to keep the promises they've made. I'll show you mathematically, it's literally impossible. It's literally impossible. What's even more disheartening is they no longer have the will to fix anything. Very, very scary. Second of all, Wall Street doesn't care whether we live or die. All Wall Street cares about is fees, regular fees all the time. That's all they do. And last but not least, the banks. Wells Fargo set up three and a half million fake accounts. Not one person went to jail, not one. And they're actually back doing exactly what they were fined for doing again, and the other big five banks are also doing the same thing again. That's why I want you to understand it's the greatest time ever to be an insurance agent. It's the greatest time ever to be a farmer's agent. I'm going to actually try to prove to you here in the little bit of time that I have that you have the finest products in America. Nobody can touch you. It's not even close anymore. And you need to know that in your heart and your soul because it's easily provable. There's no money farmers could ever pay me to tell you that if it wasn't true. So that's what I'm here today to do. I'm going to have uh, two breakout sessions later this afternoon and two breakout sessions in the morning. My buddy David McKnight, we're really good friends. He has his, uh, his tax home is in Puerto Rico, but when he's in the United States, he lives about three or four miles from me. We hang out together all the time, and we're in a movie together called The Tax Train is Coming, The Power of Zero. Uh, he's just fabulous. You've got to make sure that you get and spend some time with him at his breakout sessions this afternoon because he's only here today, not tomorrow. So please come to that. A couple of other things really quick before I really get going. You have a yellow sheet and a white sheet out there. The white sheet, this is very important. Please, it's vanmiller.com. I want to give you a gift for being here today. If you go to vanmiller.com and you just write a little note at that website that says, may I please have the 40 questions? May I please have the 40 questions? We will send you those questions free. And there's some killer good questions that are going to really help you take advantage of one of the best opportunities of all time. And in the breakout sessions, I'll direct you to some of those questions. Second, if you sign up for the newsletter, because you're here today, you get a deal. If you buy the June newsletter, you will get December, January, and February for free, which is a slow motion explanation of the power of zero as I do it. And so it'll help you find hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of money. When I'm home working, I pick up about a million dollars a week every single week that I'm in the field. So it's very easy to do. I'm, I, I'm not kidding you. It's very, very easy to do. And, and I want to share that with all of you. Also, I have all my CDs and stuff here with me. And you can, if you come to the breakout section, sessions, we'll share them with you. But I want to show you something. I wrote it down. It's the best time ever to be an insurance agent. It's the best time ever to sell cash value life insurance. It is the best time ever to be a farmer's agent. If you don't know that, then you are walking past what is the greatest opportunity of all time. You guys sell the finest life insurance in America, and you need to know that. Nobody can compete with you. I live 100 yards from Northwestern Mutual's home office, and they can't touch any of you. And you have to know that in your heart and soul. You can't ever let anybody tell you that they have a better policy, and I'll tell you why. I've been making a bet with audiences for 10 years now that I will pay $10,000 cash to anybody who can prove to me that they have the finest policy in America. Wait for it. Still not there yet. Ready? 10 years from now. 
You can't even tell me what's going to happen next week. So why do you keep having this battle with people? You want to know why you have the best policy in America? It's very important, and you need to not leave this room without understanding it. You're the reason you have the best policy in America. The only reason these policies are going to work is because you're going to be there to help keep the promises that were made when the policies were sold. There's going to be lots and lots of changes. And you're going to be there to help these people achieve the financial freedom, the retirement goals, everything that they need to do so they can have a successful life. You have no idea how important you are. I can't even tell you. I need to stop for a minute because I need, how many agents in here, and I can see, how many of you less than five years in the business? Raise your hands. Oh, I love you guys. Please listen, this is very important. This is ridiculously hard for me to do. I am very shy. I am a loner. I was invited to your dinner last night. I just couldn't go. I couldn't get up the nerve to go and do it. I like to be alone. I go to the movies alone. I, I drive around in the car and listen to music. When I call on somebody new the first time, I drive around the block two or three times. I have all kinds of self-conscious issues. I look in the mirror and I go, oh my God, are you old? I can't believe how overweight you are. I'm scared to death you're gonna find out I don't know what I'm talking about. See, everybody thinks you have to have a gift of gab to be good at this. It's the biggest lie in the industry. Everybody thinks that you have to study to be good. Let me give you an example. The two words of the day, very, very important. First word is questions. You don't prove to somebody that you care about them by talking about yourself. You prove to somebody that you're interested in them by asking them questions. The second word of the day is practice. Think about this. You ask a football player, you say, let me ask you something. Before you ever played a down of football, if you read 50 books about football, would you be any good at football? No. How do you get good at football? You practice. And let me ask you something. If you care anything at all about football, who are the best football players? Are the ones that have to think about what they're going to do next or the ones that can react instinctively? That's the difference between a really good insurance agent and the best insurance agents. They don't even have to think about it. It just comes naturally, conversationally. It's instinctive. And the way you get that way is by practice. So please, everybody, all you people less than five years in the business, please listen to me. For the first 16 years I was in the business, I was such a lousy insurance agent, I'm pretty sure I'm now the reason there's compliance in our industry. <laughs> I was awful, ugly, horrible, terrible. I was abusive to customers. I lied. I remember one time I worked for a company that had Paul Harvey that advertised for them. And they sent a lead. They said, dear Paul Harvey, God bless you, Paul Harvey. Will you please send an agent to our home to sell us insurance? I blew that sale. Do you get a sense of how bad I was? And I got uglier and uglier and angrier and angrier until I was hateful. I destroyed agents' careers. We'd bring a new agent into the company I was with. I'd put my arm around them. I'd say, you know, Farmers is really good. They don't issue anything, but they're really good. Commissions are awesome. You're never going to see them. Do you understand how many agents' careers I destroyed in my life? If you're around somebody like that, go away. They're destroying you. They're hurting you. We're in a business of being positive. People want to be around us because we have hope and skill to have people achieve their financial dreams. We can do that. We can help people. So ended, what ended up happening is I didn't have the courage to change. I was a coward. See, in our industry, the opposite of courage is not cowardice. The opposite of courage is conformity. At the greatest time ever to be an insurance agent, 97% of the agents in America make less than 75,000 bucks a year. Bus drivers make 75,000 bucks a year. This isn't something to do for 75,000 bucks a year. So I struggled and struggled, and finally one day I walked into my office and the manager looked at me and he said, Van, you couldn't write enough business for all the agents that you've destroyed, you're fired. 
And I was a smart, I was a jerk. I said, that's okay, I can transfer to one of the other agencies. And the other two branch managers walked out and said, no, you can't. I'll never forget that day. I spent the whole day crying my eyes out. And I don't know why, I hated this business. I hated all of you. I can't tell you how much I couldn't stand being in a room with you. You were good looking and I was ugly. You were smart and I was dumb. You were successful and I was a failure. I spent the whole day in tears, and finally I got on the phone. I called this guy named Jim, and he lived in Highland Park, Illinois. He was a Bears fan. I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm a Packers fan. And I said, Jimmy, you're not going to believe this. They fired me. And he was so kind and loving to me. He said, you know, man, they really should have done that 10 years ago. <laughs> but he said the magic words, I can save your career. I said, oh my God, what do I have to do? He said, from now on, every time you're in a home or business, I want you to take care of those people whether you make a commission or not. I'm ashamed and embarrassed to tell you what I said next. I said, Jimmy, if I do that, I'll starve to death. And I owe him everything, because the next words he said was, okay, you're fired. And I said, no, you don't understand. He said, no, you don't understand. Either do what I tell you, or you're fired. That was the first year I made the Million Dollar Roundtable. Second year, I made core of the table, and now 29 years in a row, I've made the top of the table. And I made it in March this year. Just for those of you who are new, that's 600,000 in commissions. I write between 800 and 1,200 apps a year, and I only work eight months a year. Kind of a nice life, eh? And I was a dirt ball. There's no way to explain to you how ugly and bad I was. And this industry grabbed me by the nape of my neck and picked me up and saved me from myself. This is the greatest service industry that has ever existed. It is being a servant in the true sense of the word. It took me till I was freaking 40 years old to learn it. I can almost start crying in front of you. I feel like I wasted 20 years of my life. I'm so happy now, I can't even tell you. This isn't a job, this isn't a career, this is my life. I got a second chance. And what Jimmy said to do, he said to pass it on. That's what this is. That's why I'm here. I want to make sure that you know that it's something everybody can do. You don't have to be good looking. You don't have to have a gift of gab. You don't have to be charming. I'm none of that. What you have to do is have the ability, the fastest way to build self-esteem, they say, is to make a decision to do something for somebody else. I wouldn't have known what you were talking about those first 16 years I was in the business. I hope I can get through to some of you that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Two words of the day, questions and practice. I hope you get them from all the sessions you go to. Learn great questions. All you new people, learn great questions. I'm going to show you how I sell life insurance. I'm going to read it the first time because, believe it or not, I'm still very, very nervous. There's no harder group to speak to than a group of your peers. It's easy to speak to customers. They don't know what the hell you're talking about. You guys know whether I'm lying to you or I'm not lying to you. You know in an instant. So right now I'm still a little nervous. What if there was a way to use the progressive nature of the income tax law to reallocate inefficient and ineffective forever taxed money and you could turn it into never taxed money? This strategy would allow you to use leverage to provide long-term care benefits. Notice I said that first. I don't think the number one benefit of cash value life insurance in the next 25 years will be death benefit. It'll be to pay for long-term care because we're going to have a whole country full of grandmas and grandpas. And we don't have any way to pay to take care of them. And you have it. You sell for the, not just farmers, the farmers. You understand? That's how you should talk about it. Like the Ohio State. That's what this is. And that's how you walk out of here with your chest just busting out with pride. I work for the farmers. There is no other farmers. Long-term care, it's going to be a big deal. I'm going to show you how to say You won't believe it. We're rolling over 
100,000, 200,000, 300,000 dollars a week out of money market savings accounts, CDs, short-term bond funds, and checking accounts, and showing grandmas and grandpas how they can turn this money into long-term care benefits. It's astonishing. They can't even believe it. They go, I didn't know it did that. We say, press hard, third copy is yours. Make the checkout too. Because <laughs> they've bought. This strategy would allow you to use leverage to provide long-term care benefits, reduced or completely eliminated income tax liability, tax-free lifetime retirement income, protection from investment losses, opportunity for investment gains while maintaining almost complete access to this money. Would prospects and clients be interested in a more effective and efficient way to use their money, and wouldn't that be amazing? And that's a complete description of a cash value life insurance policy. You'll notice I've never called it permanent insurance one time. Don't ever use that phrase. It scares people. Permanent scares people. Describe exactly what it is. It's a cash value life insurance policy. People come up to me afterwards and they say, well, what's your favorite? Whole life, universal life, index, universal life, variable life. Ready? Yes. It doesn't matter. It's cash value life insurance. It's one of the greatest inventions ever in the history of recorded time. And it is so appropriate right now in a time when pennies will be needed to buy dollars, when one dollar will be able to do the work of many dollars. We're going to show you that. Customers think you have to die to collect on life insurance. Again, I have $10,000 cash that I pay to anyone. I tell my customers this all the time. If you can show me one dead person that we've ever paid money to, I will pay you 10000 bucks. It's not a death policy, it's a living policy. It's there to take care of the people we love, the businesses we've worked hard to create, and the charities we have interests in, and then I lean in and I put my face in their face and I say, but if you think I want you to die, I don't. What if I could show you how to use the living benefits of this contract to reduce or completely eliminate your income tax liability? What if I could show you how to never lose any money ever again, but be in a perfect position to take advantage advantage of opportunities as, as present themselves. What if I could show you how to cover long-term care insurance, but if you didn't ever use it, you wouldn't have wasted any of the premiums. Wouldn't that be killer? And isn't that the biggest excuse people make for not buying long-term care? It isn't the premium. It's what if I pay for this for 10 or 15 or 20 years and I don't use it? Well, you guys carry around a product that allows you to take care of those people, and if they don't use it, the family, the business, and the charity get to keep the money. It's an astonishing thing that we don't explain to Americans. Most of the time they say, I didn't know life insurance covers that, or boy, you really love life insurance. That's what they say to me all the time. They've never heard this before. You will be so unique. It will be ridiculous. And that's what makes you a great salesperson when you're unique to everybody else. Everybody else tells you stuff. You're going to ask them stuff. It's the difference. It's what's going to make you powerful beyond understanding. Here's another thing that we do wrong in this industry. Don't get caught up in this. If you do this, you're selling against your competitive advantage. We do not make people rich. We prevent them from ever being poor. Please get that. If you go around trying to say life insurance is a great investment, are there other investments that can be cash value life insurance? Of course there are. But I say to them, you know, I hear that all the time, but can I ask you a question? Do you know that that's actually demeaning to cash value life insurance? That that's the only thing they want to talk about because they don't want to tell you all the other stuff that it does. Would you like to hear all the other stuff that it does? See, I don't get caught up in that life insurance is a good investment. But there's a mathematical, it's not just anecdotal. We've just been in a 10 year, in my opinion, this is Van Miller's fake bull market. When this hits the fan, everybody, you think 2007 and 8 was the crash? The crash is still coming. Get ready. This is a house of cards ready to blow up. And the only people that are going to be okay are the people that you've called on that are your prospects and your clients. They're the only ones that will be okay because they had a conversation with you before it happened. 
This is very, very important. We've had a 10-year bull market. Want to hear something? I have four studies. Shows that right now, after a 10-year bull market, there's $13 trillion of money in money markets, savings accounts, CDs, short-term bond funds, and checking accounts, making how much, you guys? Nothing. So are these people more worried about making money, or are they more worried about losing money? You bet. That's our competitive advantage, $13 trillion. Can people lose money in a cash value life insurance policy with the farmers? Answer me. They cannot. You got to know that. What is the other thing that makes an insurance company so amazing during times like this? We're called reserve companies. We have to set aside tons of money to keep the promises we've made. That's different than banks and stuff. So we're liquid when everybody else is begging to get their access to hands on money. It's what makes the insurance industry so amazing and so powerful right now. You have no idea. Working for this company, all those that were five years, raise your hands again, less than five years, raise your, you couldn't have come into the business at a better time. This is your time. This is a business Please, I'm an old white guy. It's still for old white guys. But it's for women and blacks and Latinos and young people and Asians. This is a business for everyone. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. My two children speak and write Spanish. Because the number one population in our country by 2040 it's going to be Latino. Number two will be blacks. Number three will be white people. And I'm okay with that. None of that matters. What it is is that you want to make sure that you're in a position to offer opportunity to all of these people that they can be in control of their financial futures. So remember, $13 trillion of money in money market savings accounts, CDs, short-term bond funds, and checking accounts. Watch the sale. What if I could take the money out of this pocket and I could put the money over into this pocket and I could make 100,000 look like 200,000. Would that be of any benefit? And if you spent the last year of your life in the nursing home and it was 80,000 bucks, if you'd have never met me, you'd only have 20,000 bucks left. But because you met me, you use 80,000 to pay for your long-term care. And guess what? When you die, the death benefit will replenish all the money you use, even though you used 80% of it while you were alive. Could you think of anything more brilliant, Mr. and Mrs. Client? God, watch, this is how I asked for a referral. Could you imagine if we could get everybody in America to understand how brilliant you guys are? I just asked for a referral, whether you understand it or not. They can't believe they can do all of this stuff with these products. They're amazing, amazing products. Learn to take complex issues and make them simple to understand while creating a connection between the problem and the solution that is personal to the individual. Listen with curiosity, speak with honesty, act with integrity. The greatest problem with communication is we don't listen to understand, we listen to reply. When we listen with curiosity, we don't listen with the intent to reply. We listen for what's behind the words. Please go to vanmiller.com, get those 40 questions, ask for them. Get the newsletter, I can help you. My sales presentation, again, simplification. What I learned that changed my whole career is that the more invisible in the sales presentation I am, the more sales I make. Because it's not about me, it's about who? Them. It's not about me. I'm not there to prove anything about, want to hear something? Please, I'm going to say a very arrogant sentence, and you can come up and slug me afterwards, but let me say the second one, okay, before you slug me. Ready? I have 7,000 clients in 30 states, and every one of them says to me, Van, you are easily the smartest insurance agent we've ever met. Pretty arrogant, hey? Watch what they say next. Gosh, man, nobody's ever asked us the stuff you've asked us. 
So they perceive my intelligence, not by what I told them, but by the quality of what I ask them. It's so key. So everything I'm about, everything I learned, I sell like a woman. I'm proud of it. I sell to my feminine side. Guys, I actually ask questions that I really want to hear the answers to. <laughs> it changed my life. It changed my career. I have so much fun now. That's what I'm hoping that you'll see after you're with me for a couple of days. I'm having a blast. I don't deserve it. There's no way to describe to you what a dirtball agent I was. Awful, horrible, shameful. And I got a second chance. This is my whole sales presentation, one page. I can do leap, circle of wealth, be your own banker, all of those things. I can do them in five questions. <laughs> they're, they're all my friends, but they hate when I'm around. <laughs> Because the whole thing is, the second part of it is simplification. The more you simplify this, the bigger the sale. The second thing is, the shorter the sales presentation, the more opportunity you have to make a sale. Because there's a study, brand new. It's the study of how long the attention span of an American is. Do you know how long it is, you guys? It's eight seconds. And they determined that the attention span of a goldfish was actually nine seconds. <laughs> it's not a cut. Will you guys raise your hands for me? How many in here still read books? Raise your hand. If you, do you ever get to the bottom of a page and can't remember what you've read? That's your attention span. And you want to go give these big, long sales presentations. They don't have a clue what you're talking about. They slept through most of it. The more you ask them about them, the more they become a participant. That's really the key to all of this. So this is my sales presentation. It's very simple. I'll go into a little more detail. I only have about, watch me scare the heck out of people. I only have about two more hours to go yet. No, nobody. <laughs> I only have about 15 more minutes. So this is very important. I'll show you how to expand on this, but this is the whole sale. Uh, for all, the, all, we teach this to PNC agents. In fact, I'll do it in front of you right now. I'm not going to goof around with this. Watch. When you go home from this, I want you to Google me. Google Van Miller. There's all kinds of speeches and stuff and all this kind of stuff. And you go back and I want you to call on everybody in your book of business. Every single one. And you call them up and you say, we had this guy, Van Miller, and he scared the bejesus out of me. And I'm sitting there and I'm worried sick and I can't wait to get home to see all my prospect, all my existing customers. And you were the first person I thought of, even if it's the hundredth. You're supposed to laugh. These are the jokes. <laughs> you were the first person I thought of. And the reason I couldn't wait to get back here is I just want to ask you three important things that's the only way we know how to say thank you to you for your loyalty. You've been such loyal customers, and we feel like we owe you a debt of gratitude, and the only way we know how to say thank you is to make sure you're aware of these issues. Would it be okay if you came in and spent 30 to 45 minutes with us? That's it. And then you tell them, here, we'll even tell you ahead of time, here's the three things we're going to discuss with you. First of all, are you aware that all this bad stuff is about to happen? It's easy. See, write this down if you're taking notes. Bad news does not sell. It's very important. Bad news is only used to get people's attention. It's like when you're on the freeway. Nothing, I, I'm in complete control of my temper except for when people slow down for an accident. You should see me, I'm bouncing off my car inside. And you get up there and you look and you go, why is everybody slowing down? And this, as soon as you get past that, where that accident was, what do you do right away? You speed back up, but for 10 minutes, you drive with your hands at 10 and 2, and you drive a little closer to the speed limit. Hour later, what are you back doing? Driving the way you were driving. So bad news doesn't get the job done. It just gets their attention. So second thing, what if there was a way to be kept safe from all of this bad news? Gosh, at the very least, wouldn't you want to know about that? Notice I didn't say, oh, this is the greatest thing of all time. They're so used to hearing that. Come on, at the very least, wouldn't that be worth half an hour, 45 minutes of your time to find out you could be kept safe from all of this? 
And the last thing, this is the most important thing. This is what your prospects and clients and customers buy. What if there was a way to take advantage of everything that's about to happen? Gosh, wouldn't that be spectacular? If every time we had one of these crashes and you didn't have to lose any money, and then you'd be in perfect position to take advantage of it. If you could reduce or completely eliminate your income tax liability, wouldn't that be spectacular? What if you could cover long-term care, but if you didn't need it for long-term care, you wouldn't waste any of the money? Wouldn't that be taking advantage of it? Wouldn't that be killer? See, they just can't believe that you can do all of that. You can actually do it with one product, a cash value life insurance policy. Now, please, again, I only have a small amount of time up here, but in the breakout sessions, we'll show you how to use an annuity and a life insurance policy. You just won't believe all the amazing things that you can do for your prospects and clients. But that's my whole sales presentation. That's it. That's what I do countless times a day. Three things. By the way, how many people under 40 years old in, his, in this room? Raise your hands. This is also very important. Never talk to people under the age of 40 about retirement. They don't have a clue what you're talking about. That's so far away, it's ridiculous. Change your conversation to suit the people you're talking to, and the conversation be, should be about financial freedom. What if at 41 years old, you could take two years off and go do what you wanted to do while you were young enough to really enjoy it? Wouldn't it be great to build that kind of financial freedom? See, those are different conversations with different age groups of people, different people that we want to have those conversations with. It's very exciting. Instinctively, you know that asking questions is the right way, and yet you sell against your competitive advantage when you get nervous by telling people stuff. You got to stop doing it. Again, I wrote it twice. The two words of the day, practice. In order to get good at this, all you got to do is practice. All you new people, less than five years, what if I told you you could learn how to do this in 30 to 60 days? Would you come to my session today if I could show you how to double, triple, quadruple your production in 30 to 60 days by just learning eight to 10 questions? Would you do it? Raise your hands if you do it. Come and see me, let me help you. And by the way, there's a lot of agents in here who make tons of money. There's no way I'm gonna inspire you to come and by telling you you're gonna make more money. I get that. That's not how I'm inspired, money die. I've signed 30 contracts in a row with my company. I've never read it, I don't even know what the commissions are. That doesn't turn me on. But to all those guys that are making tons of money in here, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Are the people that you serve in your, in your community, do they become your friends, your clients? And if you don't ask them about what's about to happen in our country with taxes and longevity, inflation, volatility, if you don't ask them about this stuff and they get killed, how are you gonna feel? What would it take for you to just spend a half an hour to ask them a few questions and see if they'd be interested to find out? And don't assume that anybody's telling them because the way people are taught about finance in our country is in 15 second sound bites. Buy term and invest the difference. Life insurance is a lousy investment. I hate annuities and so should you. I tried to take out an ad that said, I hate Ken Fisher and so should you. They wouldn't let me. You should contribute to a 401k to the match. If you're under 40 and you put anything in a tax deferred vehicle like an IRA or 401k, I'm sorry, I think that's malpractice. Taxes are gonna be higher in the future, way higher. We don't have the money, everybody. They're gonna be a lot higher at every level, at federal, state, local, property taxes, everything you know that says the word taxes is gonna be higher. So shouldn't all you people be putting your money in Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, and cash value life insurance with the farmer's insurance. That's where it should be, where it'll be safe, where you'll be able to keep all the promises that you've made, and that's how you talk to people. You have a conversation with them. Does it make sense, if taxes are historically now low now, to take a deduction now and transfer a whole bunch of money to the future when they're gonna need more tax revenue? Or would it be smarter to pay your taxes now, put your money in a cash value life insurance, Roth IRA or a Roth 401k, and never have taxes paid on it again? 
Wouldn't that be smarter? Why aren't we asking people about this? Mathematically, you know I'm correct. The un unfunded liability, truth and accounting, $105 trillion at the federal level. There are 40 million taxpayers in California, 150,000 taxpayers, uh, excuse me, there's 40 million people in California, 150,000 taxpayers, 1%. How long do you think that's gonna continue? You have to understand, fewer and fewer people are paying more and more of the taxes. Look at this in Illinois. This will actually make you angry. Illinois looks to raid re private retirement accounts to solve its pension crisis. Guys, they're coming. If you don't find a way, and yet, in a recent survey, 59% of millennials and 40% of Americans overall think that winning the lottery is a reasonable plan for retirement. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's why you are so amazing and so powerful and so wonderful. Please, I, I'm running out of time here that for me, 45 minutes is like a minute. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> Um, just a couple of things if I could leave you with. People have not, they've lost sight of what certain things mean. Let me give you a little comparison and then I'll close with a couple of things. A million seconds is 11 and a half days. A billion seconds is 32 years. A trillion seconds is 32 years thousand years and we're 22 trillion in debt see 22 trillion doesn't sound a lot but it sounds like 22 times 32,000 years now does it sound like a lot of money and we will be 40 trillion in debt by the way all those people under 40 raise your hand you people are toast this is a world of old people, of grandmas and grandpas. One out of every seven people on planet Earth will be over the age of 65 by 2030. The whole freaking world's gonna look like Florida. <laughs> That's where you come in. The only people left with any money in America are all the grandmas and grandpas who were great savers, learned how to live within their means, and if we can get to them and show them how to preserve, safely grow, and leverage their money, we can take care of the generations that come after because they have a big pile of money that we can help move to the next generations rather than to the coffers of the government, Wall Street, the banks, hospitals, and nursing homes. It's a great opportunity. If I can close with a couple of things. First, one of my favorite groups of all time is a group called the Beatles. <laughs> I, I love them, and we were gonna hire a guy named George Martin, who's the fifth Beatle, to speak at our, at our million dollar round table meeting that I got a chance to help plan. And the reason we were gonna do that, I've seen the show Love in Las Vegas at the Mirage probably 15 times, and you don't wanna sit next to me because I cry like a baby through the whole thing. The music, can you imagine the Beatles to Cirque du Soleil? It's beautiful. It's just the music touches me. And the reason we were gonna hire George Martin is he talks about all of you. Listen to what he says about you. He had a relative who was in our business, so he knows what we do. He said, like love, do we care if somebody's nose is a bit crooked or their face a bit wrinkled? He said, no, the power to move people to laughter, to tears, to violence, listen carefully, the ability to inspire people to take action is the most powerful attribute any human being can have, and that's what you guys do for a living. You change the world one appointment at a time, and you can never lose sight of that. The head of NAFA is a guy named Kevin Mayhew, and he has a bar in downtown Orlando. It's a really cool bar, really, really cool. And the NAFA meeting's in Orlando this year, so I'm gonna spend some time there. About a block away from his bar is a place called the Pulse Nightclub. And in June, two years ago, a gunman walked into the Pulse Nightclub and started killing our children. I'll never forget it as long as I live. They had this 22-year-old kid. 
And they, three times, listen to this, three times, he went back, went back into that nightclub and took out friends of his that had been shot. Three times, not once, not twice, three times. And they're, you know how they are on morning TV, they're badgering him. Oh, you're such a hero, you're so amazing, you're so fantastic. And he's crying, literally, <gasps> just sobbing, and I'm crying. Please, I'm 68 years old, June 22nd. I cry at Star Trek now, but I'm crying. <laughs> and I'm watching this, and they're, uh, instead of making him feel good, they're badgering him. You're such a hero. You're so amazing. And finally, I'll never forget, he goes just like this. He goes, oh, I wish I could have done more. Please, if you didn't come with this meeting, with the intent to leave and be able to do more for your customers, the prospects in, in your community, the people in your state, the people of this country, then you're not here for the right reason. The secret of happiness is never about what you get. It is always about what you give. And it took me till I was 40 years old to learn. And I'm sad about it every time I think about it but I also understand that I'm in the greatest service industry that has ever existed. Please hear me again. I used to hate to be in a room with you people. Now I don't ever wanna leave. The secret of our industry is not watching us turkeys up here on this stage. The secret of this industry is to be in a room full of like-minded people that believe as we believe. It does rub off. It does become part of you. You never want to miss any of these meetings if it's possible because together we are the hope of the American people and I know we will, we will be there for the people we love and care about in our communities. Please come see me at my breakout sessions. I really do want to share ideas and transfer this information to you. It's so amazing to be here with all of you. Thank you for being here. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.